UFC 301 breakdown, the Kill Shot Podcast. Ooh, vai madere. Ooh, vai madere. If you don't click the like button, ooh, vai madere. I mean, come on, that was clever, you guys. You got to give me the like just for that. <laughs> that is monk. Geek is not feeling well under the weather, which I was earlier this week. So bounce back. Wish geek well. So me and monk are going to take you through UFC 301 for DraftKings purposes. You can use some of these, um, some of this dissection for betting as well. Hit the like button. We have a pay per view. Last week, I'm going to be honest. I did awful last week. Like. It was a bad week. And then yeah. well, I'm not one of those guys. Like I, I see other people around the industry. I'm not going to pretend like they don't exist. There's plenty of other good content creators out there. You should come check us out at DFS Army. But when I saw Mad Lab post that he had a bad week today, I was, <laughs> no. all right, it happens to everybody. <laughs> so looking to bounce back here. I mean, UFC 300, we fucking crushed. So I'll give. Uh, I didn't play nearly as much last week on that on the, on that card, so I'm happy to be back here. We got another pay per view, a lot to talk about. Monk, I guess first of all, how are you feeling? Are you under the weather? And how are you feeling about this card? Surprisingly, not. But I think every person I know or do content with is sick either the end of last week or this week. So be careful out there. Uh, yeah, I'm loving the pay per view. Um, trying to find a couple of dog spots to go in on, but uh, definitely looking forward to 14 fights. It's quite a few for DFS, so uh, be sure to uh, check out the coach's notes and uh, hit the like on this podcast. I heard, I don't know if it's true, but uh, you, you you just do better placement-wise if you hit the like on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's it's totally true, and, and you, yeah. should, you should at least try it out. Yeah. Try it out, like a cake. Try it out. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you watch your mom's house, but that's. Oh yeah, I was waiting yeah. for you to give out the address. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know what? It's been it's been a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know what? That is a great great segue to the first <laughs> fight of the night. We are going to start at the bottom of the card and work our way up. Going to make you guys work for it a little bit. And besides these first couple fights of the night, they really do matter for DFS. They count just as much as the fights at the end of the night. Alessandro Costa, he is 8,200 on DraftKings, taking on Kevin Borjas at 8,000 over on DK. As you see here, we're going to pull up some topology as we're talking. Minus 140 is Costa. The comeback on Borjas is plus 115. As Monk pointed out before the show, Borjas in every picture you see of him uh, looks the, like he's totally disinterested in everything, maybe even life. And I hadn't seen that, and now I don't think I'll be able to unsee it. So thanks for that. You are first. What do you got? No problem there. Um, what is a problem, though, is kind of how I'm going to be weighing this fight here. Borges uh, came in against Josh Van. I think that was on short notice, if I do recall. Um, yep. Dropped, you know, five strikes a minute there. Didn't do much else. But he got hit with ten over 10 strikes a minute uh, from Joshua Van. So not much uh, striking defense there. Does come in uh, with eight of his nine wins via KOTK. Meanwhile, Costa is about to fight the guy that's fighting, or uh, sorry, just came off of the fight, just came off of fighting the guy who is fighting in the main event. There we go. Took three times. Has only looked great against uh, Jimmy Flick, but in his defense, like I said, Steve Ersig and Amir Albazi. So top of the top, basically, in the flyweight division. So I'm not really sure what I am going to see out of this guy's uh, Costa only landed one takedown, 8% control time over 15 minutes. He landed almost 11 strikes a minute against Jimmy Flick in six minutes, but his, his other fights are uh, very lackluster, 3.6 and 1.4. Um, just consider this a low-level flyweight fight and uh, play it appropriately. I would say watch ownerships, and um, this is a not terrible fight to target as it is right in the heart of the mid-range there, 82 and 8,000. So I don't have much. I'm not going crazy over, but I'm also not going under the field probably either. Uh, I do favor Costa a little bit. Yeah, this, it's, it's, it's funny you said that. That's kind of... First fight of the night, and it's one of those I'm playing a little bit vanilla because I don't have a great read on it. Uh, Borges, you mentioned the Van fight. That's what Van does to everybody. He got a uh, Borges came out guns a blazing as he usually comes out because he's from the Peruvian regional scene. Um, and, and short notice, you got a, a lot of times those guys come out quick anyway, trying to put the fight away. And Van takes a little bit of damage, gets you tired, and then all of a sudden he he throws. 20 strikes a minute and just as like max Holloway level volume all of a sudden. Uh, so 
I don't want to ding him too much, but you look back, it's the Peruvian regional scene. He looked okay. Costa, a little bit better opposition. I think he's a little bit cleaner of a striker. Not a huge inside the distance prop in this fight. Uh, I think it's a decent fight to target, but it's one I'm pretty, like I said in the open, I'm going to play pretty vanilla. I'm going to go a little bit over on Costa, a little bit under on Borges using the DFS Army ownership projections. Link down below to join DFS Army. More picks, plays, promo codes, cheat sheets, Proptimizer, Optimizer, all that good stuff. So make sure you check that out. I'm going to use that tool for this fight, and we got some other stronger stands I have later in the card. But for this one, I'm kind of relying on the tools, and I am siding with the favorite. That being said, let's go to the next fight, which this fight, by the way, was is a reschedule. We already had this fight once before. It got canceled. Bonfim missed weight. And now we have Ishmael Bonfim taking on Vince from hell, P. Shell, which if that is not at the top of Monk's nickname ratings, I I can't. Also at the all. top of my mustache rating as well. I mean, <laughs> good Lord, be. this guy. Gotta be. Uh, looks topology. I don't know where topology pulls the odds from. So unless they don't have it, I'm just going to read from here and just that's what I'm going off of, guys. I don't want to keep flipping tabs all over the place. Minus 450 for Bonfim, plus 350 for Vince from Hell Pichel. The top of this card for DFS is a bit of a mess in that we have four, like, I, I don't know where you want to draw the line. I'll say the four, the top four dudes, 96, 95, 94, 9300. Michelle Pereira, Caio Bahio, Vitor Petrino, Ismael Bonfim. All Brazilian big home favorites in Rio de Janeiro. I will say, though, of all of those fights, this is the one to target the least of. And it could burn you, but you have to make choices. For me, this is my least favorite of those four fights. I do think Bonfim wins. However, and it's a little concerning because Pichel, as you see, is 41 years old. The durability is going to start to wane. But if anybody's going to not get a quick finish, I think Bonfim is going to strike with him, probably wear down Pichel. He, if he gets the finish and puts out a ton of volume, I could be in some trouble. But I don't think it's totally chalked because there's plenty of big scores out there on this card. He's the least likely to get, the, I think, the 60-second bonus, the multiple knockdown, first-round type of win. Not, I don't think he's going to shoot a ton of takedowns. Uh, Pichel's wrestling is a strong suit. I, I actually, I think Bonfim probably could have. Bonfim's better everywhere. If he wanted to take down Pichel at this point in his career, I think he probably could. I just think he chooses to strike with him and wins that way. It's not that I'm not confident Bonfim wins. It's that I have to make choices at the top of the DraftKings salary pool, and I'll probably have to be under to both guys. Monk, what are you thinking for our second fight of the evening? Yeah, I probably agree. Remember a couple of weeks ago when Court McGee fought I have no idea who because I can't remember, and everybody's like, oh, Court McGee's dusted, and I was wondering if that was the case or not. I wasn't sure, um, and we everybody kind of leaned on that, and turned out he went all three rounds, and it was a relatively boring fight. I kind of see this one probably the same way. Vince Pichel never even been knocked down uh, in, the UFC, in his UFC career. I know he's 41 years old basically 41 and a half almost uh if you're 11 and you still count your age by half uh vince p show though also been two years since he last fought which is also uh I am big 38 and mark. a half years old yeah yeah 38 i'm 10 and a half this this week um but yeah in months what's that in months that's how old i am yeah exactly <laughs> still doing it like babies still i'm like 486 months old um but yeah i mean I like the Bonfim brothers. They're exciting. You know, they get big wins over guys like Terrence McKinney. You know, Vince Pichel is not Terrence McKinney. He's not just going to sit there and throw and and make mistakes like uh, on that on that type of level. So I'm thinking decision. I think 9300 is a bit too much here. Um, like you said, hopefully I'm not wrong, but uh, that's just kind of how I see it. Winner scores, you know, 70 to 80 points. Vince is a tough son of a bitch, and I think he probably loses by decision. Let's move on to the next fight. Oh boy! Do we have to? We do, and I'll, and unfortunately, there's a reason behind it. Dione Barbosa taking on Ernesta Karakate is what I'm going to go with. Uh, from Lithuania, by the way, for people. I mean, it says it right here, but people look at the flag and go, "What the fuck is that?" She's from the same <laughs> place Julia Stoliarenko is from, for whatever that's worth. Okay, somehow Dione, Dione Barbosa is minus two twenty in a UFC MMA fight, taking on Ernesta Karakate at plus one eighty. DraftKings salaries for this one. Dione, Dione Barbosa is 8,900 and Kate is 7,300. Monk, what stats do you have? I mean, help us dissect this 
clown show. Yeah, this is a real, real clown show. I mean, I guess they both did well in their DWCS fight. Obviously, they both won. Uh, I'm just going to call her Carrot Cake. Uh, did better mm. because she was the plus 180 something. Carrot cake. So, she, yeah, she was the plus 180 dog, so it looks better on paper. Uh, but she also gave up five points a minute in that fight. Um, she gave up 4.77 points a minute at distance and over 5.1 inside the distance. Uh, still ended up with a win and a good score, 114 points, but uh, was given up uh, some decent points there. Ernest or uh, Dione didn't do much better. I mean, we're in the high threes, but I mean, it's still a shitload of points. This is a super low level women's MMA fight. Um, honestly, I have, I have, I, I have no clue. If you're in GPPs and you're looking for somebody to just like a punt play, I, I suppose Ernest is probably okay. Um, the argument but, I'm about to make. That's exactly where I'm going. Yeah, and that's about it. I don't know how you play unknown Dione Barbosa with eight pro fights at 8900 when you got uh where's where's my uh salaries when you got guys around her like Orobai or you know Pantoja a uh, hundred dollars cheaper you're gonna pay a hundred dollars more for Barbosa and you're just gonna gonna say Pantoja not this week I know you're gonna five round fight and you've been putting up like 140 I mean, points. Keep going Dracar close is yeah. cheaper John Dracar, Silva is yeah cheaper. Brito, Brito is cheaper, like like, dude, yeah, I'm not interested in the barba. And that could come back and bite me because she could win in the first minute or the first round with a that's, knock. Who knows? But that, that's this is it with these two, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, come on. That's the problem. You can argue game theory. No one's going to play Barbosa. I'm like, yeah, sure. It's a valid argument. GPPs, whatever. Cash games do not go near Barbosa. This fight is minus 160. Yeah. The reason why I also shying away from that gpp plays this fight is minus 160 to go to decision neither one's very good i've at least in her uh, contender series fight saw carrot cake as now i'm gonna steal throw a she only like 186 strikes you said like there's just yeah volume on volume on volume i'll take that for 7300 i think it's i think this is the best cash game punt on the card quite honestly um like hands down um actually well I think I might have just put my foot in my mouth. I have to check salaries real <laughs> quick for the other one I'm thinking about. You know who it is. Yeah, you know what? Second best. And we'll get Close there. Enough. Yeah. Second best. Um, <laughs> but honestly, you can double punt with both ladies, hint, hint, and then just pay up to all these studs you want to get to. And that's a build I'm going to play with. Just Barbosa at this salary, at those odds, and into the distance odds, just too many unknowns for me. I'll lean towards carrot cake and go from there and hopefully you know she ends up in the right lineup but yeah, overall it's a, it's a crap shoot yeah on, on overall I'll be underweight to the fight but if i'm gonna be overweight if i can see those ownership projections and carrot cakes at like 10 percent, i'm gonna be over that I'll, mm. with on this card and all the, the scrubs i don't want to play even at 14 fights I'll, I'll probably have room for 15 percent of her yep let's move on and talk about a more exciting fight Mauricio One Shot Ruffy. Great nickname, by the way. I like that one. Take it Very on good. Jamie. My chin is absolutely fucking toast now. <laughs> Malarkey. And he's 20. I swear I thought Jamie Malarkey was 48 years old. But no, he's just 29. Uh, Ruffy is minus 165. Malarkey is plus 140. Uh, DraftKings salaries for this one. Ruffy's 8,400. Malarkey is 7,800. This fight is minus 275 to end inside the distance and one of my favorite fights to target on the card. Ruffy has never seen the judges' scorecards. Nine and one in his career. All wins by finishes. Malarkey's probably more technical, but I don't trust that dude's chin to hold up for three rounds. And it's why you play both sides of this fight for GPPs. It's not a cash game fight. I'm picking Ruffy for the reason I just said, but if they go, if, if, Ruffy doesn't knock out. If Ruffy wins, he knocks out Malarkey. Good score. And if Malarkey wins, he's cheap enough and probably wrestles Ruffy. But even an underdog winning is always live based on the context of the card. Pretty much always, unless it's like 8,000, maybe 7,900. Even 78 and below, as soon as you have any win at 7,800 and below, I start getting real interested because you just, just the way these cards shake out. But if Malarkey wins, it's probably via wrestling. I'm not sure, but. I am on the Ruffy side. Great GPP fight. Monk, what are the stats today? 
Yeah, same thing here. Uh, Huff, is it, I, I, we're, I'll call him Ruffy with you. Um, I could be saying that really wrong. It's probably Huffy, I would imagine, but I have no idea. That, that's just, yeah, it's probably Hoofy. Look, yeah. Listen, I didn't know Geek wasn't doing the podcast like an hour before. I When I watch tape, I watch that shit on mute. Right. I looked up <laughs> Kara Kate because I was scared of the Lithuanian flag. And honestly, the Portuguese names, even I do know, I'm going to fuck up. So let's just yep. whatever. We'll just call him Maurizio. Uh, only scored 76 points in that third round KO uh, right before the bell, uh, like 20, 15 seconds left uh, against someone named Raymond. Um, yeah, Malarkey, like you said, chin is completely dusted. Five KO losses. Uh, Ruffy's, like you said as well, nine and one. All of them finishes. All of them KO, TKO finishes. Um, and we're looking at uh, Malarkey one and two in his last three. Both losses coming via KO, TKO. And one was to Muhammad Naimov, in which he was a minus 405 favorite. The favorite that was Naimov's debut fight. Uh, but the other one was against Nazrat Hackbrast in the first like two minutes. And Nazrat doesn't ever do that to anyone ever. So yeah, I'm starting to wonder that was, about that Malarkey. was a bad look. It was really bad. Uh, really, really bad. And the Naimov one, he was kind of winning that fight until he got uh, caught there and was just completely done. So yeah, give me a roughy huge GPP spot. And like you said, Malarkey, while I do think he is a bit too expensive, um, if he wins, he is uh, he's in there. I mean, he did land three takedowns against Naimov, three against Prado. So he's landing uh, takedowns against, uh, you know, debutante fighters that are generally, uh, I guess in Prado's case at least, generally strikers. But uh, yeah, I like Ruffy um, overall for GPPs. I think he's got a good chance of KO and Malarkey here. Huffy. Now I just want to say I just want to say it wrong. Oh, you got to hit the H. I don't, super I don't even hard. know what make. Let's move on to I think the weirdest nickname in mixed martial arts. Akeem Neto BJJ Silva. <laughs> By the way, that's my announcer voice, which I think I should start doing just in honor of um of Charlie Arnold filling in for Joe Rodriguez. For, yeah, well, I was wondering. I can hear his voice. I can hear his voice going out, and then all of a sudden she's up he there. I was like, too. oh shit. Yeah, he was definitely said, came back for the main. Good job on him. Good job on Charlie. Good we job came all back around. for half the main. I think she announced it, and then he announced the winner. <laughs> so I, I thought I thought I thought that was a good job all around. Oh yeah, it sh- shit happens, and I mean I'm not gonna say Charlie was great, but for short notice, that that's hard. What she oh, did, yeah, is fucking hard. I yeah, know she didn't do all the fine. crazy inflections and this and, and and or even her own. You know, Martinez doesn't do crazy inflections. He's got his own style, which which some people really like. I, I like. Probably both handed her his note cards and said, "Please do this for me." Yeah. So I mean, big ups. I'd like to see her get another shot on like uh, uh, the next time um, uh, Gadzia uh, headlines a fight night card. And give her that. Yeah. One. There you go. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, Joaquim Neto BJJ Silva taking on Drakkar. Jeremy Stevens once pushed me so hard I st- didn't fight. No, uh, that that actually was really bad on on Stevens and close uh, on his side on that one. By the way, I know he just poked fun, but that was right a fucked up situation. If you want to go look that up between him and, and Jeremy Stevens, um, close the favorite minus one ninety. Neto BJJ is plus one sixty. The uh the salaries on this one: Jakar closes eighty seven hundred. Uh, Neto BJJ is 7500 i think this is the fifth fight so monk you're actually first for this one what do you got i don't know that i really like this a ton for uh for dfs here jacar close never a great score unless he's fighting like brandon jenkins or something like that somebody that's super low level uh which i would not consider uh joaquin silva super low level um other than that he's scoring less than 100 basically every time 98 against giagos and selecki 78 against uh, guys like Garcia, uh, you know, so not, never really good scores and never really giving up a ton of points either. I think he's averaging, where did it go? 87 points given up per loss, so nothing to write home about there. Meanwhile, Silva scores 83 when he loses and uh, gives up 103, or scores 83 when he wins, gives up 103 when he loses. So that is a, a lot of points, but that's just not Dracar Close's uh style you know even if he's slam KOing you he's still not scoring a uh, 100 points so i'm not sure i really feel about this one for for gpps i guess i like close but i don't know if i like him enough to roster him in cash so i think this is probably a, des- a decision fight close gets the decision and um i don't see anything really standing out 
Uh, to me, Silva had, you know, two and one in his last five or in his last three, but against Jesse Ronson and Clay Guida, uh, and then had a moment against Armin Sarukian, but was dominated the rest of the time. So, yeah, give me close, probably by decision. You close to the guy who throughout his UFC career, I continue to undervalue and get wrong, and he's better than I think he is. Um, and I can admit that he just he just always shows up. I think he's really well rounded. He can outstrike wrestlers and decent strikers. Like he's good enough to he's one of those guys that can take advantage of your weaknesses. You have to be good everywhere to beat Drakkar close. He's got mm-hmm. a little more pop than I always think, a little more volume than I think. Uh just is a really solid all around fighter. And I think that's gonna I actually think he's got multiple advantages here against Neto BJJ. I think he's the more technical striker. Neto will have the power, even though his nickname is Neto BJJ. He's not a grappler. I think Drakkar Close can can wrestle him if he chooses to. And for that reason, I think this is actually one of the sneakier fights to target in the mid range because people, at least from what I gather, you know, you have Huffy who's cheaper. Pantoja is a hundred more, um, and Joiner Sembrito is two hundred. I think is two hundred less. I think. Drakkar Close might go a little bit overlooked here. I, I'm looking to get a little bit overweight on Drakkar Close if I can. It's one of those, let me see these ownership type of decisions. But I do like Drakkar Close, I think, more than the average person for this fight. I was going to say, you, you might have convinced me a little bit to throw some more because I'm looking at Silva a little bit more. His last three losses, all KO losses. So not a good look for... Yeah, he can get knocked out. Taken. I think Close yeah. can wrestle. I, there's, just, there's just multiple paths to a decent score here. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Let's talk Jean Lord Sasson Silva taking on William Jaguar. That's awful. <laughs> Jaguar. Boring. William Jaguar Gomes. <laughs> Ugh, wake me up. Uh, Jean Silva is minus 140 in this fight. Gomes, the comeback, is plus 115. Uh, Silva's 8,600 on, uh, on DraftKings. Gomes is 7,600. This is a fight that since I started, you know, removing these podcasts earlier, which I think is good. Hopefully you guys appreciate that. Like it. If you're not first, you're last type of thing. Hit the like button. But so I start on Saturday nights pretty much while I'm watching other fights. I use all the downtime in these fucking cards we have to tape and start getting my thoughts together for the next week. Works out pretty well. I think so in what, four days? I think I flipped off in this fight. Like I, I was on Silva to start with. I'm like, ah, no, you know what? I like Gomez for the upset. Now I'm back on Silva again. So that being said, I will be rostering William Gomez because I at least had the thought that he's going to win this fight. Um, it, It's really, it's 50-50 to see a finish. So it's one you got to get some exposure to. I don't have, I clearly, because I'm back and forth, I don't have a great read. I think what... The reason why I flip flopped is the more I see this fight on the feet, I think Gomez is live to stay long and be more technical and hurt Silva. And then I'm like, well, Silva's really live. He hits big himself. And if anybody's going to wrestle, it's going to be Jean Silva in this fight. If anybody's got the grappling advantage, I think it's going to be Silva. And that is kind of the tiebreaker here. So, a really close fight that one obviously I think can go either way. I think if you're betting, the values on Gomez is the dog. And on DraftKings, because I think Silva's got more finish potential, that's where I would go for for DraftKings. Mark, how about for you? you care to clear things up for people who just listen to me and go, I don't know who the fuck you just picked. What do I do? <laughs> well, I think I'm leaning Silva, one of three fighting nerds on this card. We already talked about uh, Huffy or Ruffy. Uh, this is another one, and John Silva looked good, but he was fighting Weston Wilson, probably one of the worst fighters in the, on the entire roster. So... Not really sure what to say there. He did what he was supposed to do, scored a bunch of points, um, and looked good against a, a scrub. Meanwhile, William Gomes, I mean, this dude finished uh, something named Giannis Gamori in his last fight, and he scored 69 points with a KO win, 69 points. Before that, he uh, split decision with Fire Marshal Bill Francis Marshall, 41.91 points. I don't want any part of this guy. For DraftKings, like just DraftKings kryptonite, if there ever was one, he throws strikes at a relatively low volume. That's what William Gomes does. That is all that he does. He doesn't allow a ton of strikes. I mean, if Silva's going to score well, he's going to need to finish Gomes, and I just don't know if that's going to happen. I, I'm Lee William Gomes fights like I said. DraftKings 
freaking kryptonite. So I'm not going to be completely fading him to zero, but it's going to be difficult for me to roster uh, much of Gomis. And honestly, I'll probably be a little under on Silva just because Gomis fights suck, to be honest. I'm picking Silva, though. For All the right. I think, I think I'm a little bit higher than you, but yeah, right it's now. oh, if you're knocking dudes out and scoring not even 70 points. I'm see ya. I don't want it. Let's move on to Elvis. I should change my draft, my topology picture to me with the white hair stained in blood. Brenner, yeah, taking on Mick Debeck Orlebi. Who well, I don't know if I said his first name right, but now I can just call him Orlebi the rest of the breakdown, which is nice. Uh, Orlebi is minus 260 is the favorite. Brenner the dog at plus 210. Draft King salary for this one, uh, I think, are very, very interesting as we got Orlebi at 9,000, Brenner at 7,200. Monk, you're first for this one. Yeah, I'm just going to say play this fight. Uh, yep. Relatively low ish level. Um, but both guys, I mean, Brenner, let's start with Brenner. You can just like do whatever you want to this guy, and he still somehow wins a fight. He's in a freaking ROI machine. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen anything quite like it, but yeah, plus 470, plus 400, uh, just absolutely demol not demolished, getting demolished, and then demolishing his odds value um, in a good way. Just, just ROI machine. I don't know what else to say about Brenner. Rattled off three in a row. Uh, meanwhile, we've got Oral by. Looked great against Euros Medic, what he's supposed to do, basically. Uh, he wrestle fucked them, seven takedowns, 80% control time, landed only eight uh, significant strikes, found the submission in nine minutes, and scored 123 points. Now we get up at 9K. I think this is a very interesting fight to target. Uh, I like Brenner. I wouldn't even call him a punt play. I just like Brenner as a dog. I am picking Oral by, but I think the winner has potential to uh, score very, very well here. Yeah, uh, totally agree. I'm going to go further to pick Elvis Brenner in this one, but is one to target both sides of. Um, the problem is Orlebi is a big favorite. He's still a relatively untested UFC prospect. Um, at his, his debut, he leaned on his takedown game. I don't think... He, I, is he going to do that against Elvis Brenner? Brenner's got pretty good takedown defense. We saw it against um, uh, Tukagov. The Tukagov, yep. one of the Govs. Uh, it was Tukagov and then Guram Kutatalade. Yeah, so got good takedown defense, and on the feet, Orlebi really doesn't impress me at this level. I think it's I think it's a level thing where I think this fight should just be closer based on level of competition, and that Orlebi shouldn't be able to lean on the wrestling here. Uh, 50 50 to go to decision. Either way, with a live dog, I, I just I, I like this fight a bunch. I think there's three fights we haven't talked about. It's probably uh, you know what? It's middle of the pack. There are some other really good fights to target we haven't got to yet. I know we've said a lot of eh, this is okay, this is okay. The good fights to target are coming, and they're not all the the, the big salary fighters. There are some good mid range fights to target. This is right in the middle of the pack for me now that I looked at my rankings. It's like five or six. Uh, but I am on the Elvis Brenner side. I think he is a an elite GPP play on this card. Now let's go to the best cash game punt on the card. What fucking year are we living in? Carolina Kovalkiewicz is on a four-fight UFC winning streak at 38 years old and looking fine doing it. Mm. Meanwhile, you got Yasmin Lucindo, who is a baby, 22 years old, as the minus 350 favorite. The comeback on Carolina is plus 275. Somebody just made a dirty comeback joke in their head, and I just won't stand for that, even though I pointed it out again. Uh, 9,200 for Yasmin, 7,000 for KK on DraftKings. Look, Yasmin Lucindo is aggressive and will move forward. Carolina Carolina's a good striker. She's seen that before. Just don't get taken down. I don't think Yasmin's got a full enough complete game to, to, to do that. I, I actually think Carolina's going to get her fifth win here as a decent-sized dog money here. And I get Yasmin is 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 it's she's younger, she's aggressive. Am I a little worried about KK's durability because you don't often see 115ers? Uh, get knocked out cold like Jessica Andrade did to her. Like it's not the typical knockout you see in this weight class. And Yasmin has big power. Just I, I can't trust Yasmin Lucindo at this price. 
I just I just cannot do it. Uh, so I like KK. I think she's be durable enough. She's a good striker, decent takedown defense, super cheap. I, I, I tell me what I'm missing here, uh, Monk. Other, I mean, maybe maybe I'm overselling how live she is to win the fight. But I think regardless, even if you think Yasmin wins here, how is Carolina not an elite cash game play for DraftKings? Exactly. I mean, maybe Yasmin, 22 years old. There's a 16 year age gap here. Maybe she comes out and and you know we've seen Carolina get backed up before, taking punches. Maybe she comes out here and finishes her early. I don't see it like that. I agree with you. This four fight streak that Carolina is on, and she is number one in my heart as well, uh, is absolutely insane. Uh, not really from a name value, but after the career she's had and the trajectory that she was on before that Felice Herrick fight, she is one hundred thousand percent turned it around. Two fights over, well over a hundred points. She's landed nine strikes a minute, five strikes a minute, nine strikes a minute, and nine and a half strikes a minute in her last five fights. All of them, well, three of the four are decisions. The other one lasted nine minutes. Uh, she is out here doing work, and we've seen it a bunch. Young fighters come in, all this uh, all this hype, and in hype, the hype this week is in the form of DraftKings salary, as she is the fourth or fifth most expensive fighter in Yasmin Lucindo. They come out, all this hype. And they uh, all of a sudden the punches aren't having the effect that they had before and, and the, the opponent's taking them. And now all of a sudden the opponent's not getting tired and I myself am getting tired. And then the tables just turn and the veteran delivers the valuable vet lesson. And that's what I'm going for this week. Rooting for Caroline to get it done. And at 7K, that is fucking disrespectful. She was 8,600 against Belbita, 85 against Demopolis, 82 against Silvana Gomez Juarez and 79 against Fleece Harry. You're telling me now she's $900 cheaper than her cheapest salary I just I just laid out there for a 22-year-old? Um, no, I'm I'm not seeing that. And Lucindo's only beat Viana and Walker. Give me a break, man. Get Come on, Carolina. War Carolina. Let's go. 7K, I love it. That was way more aggressive than I thought. So Let's go, it. hey. That's what she does. She just, she just stirs it up in me, man. Moving on. Is that okay? Uh, so easy, though. Out so loud. easy. Joe Anderson Brito. <laughs> oh, my God. It's minus 165 favorite <laughs> over Jack Shore at plus 140. DraftKings salary here. Brito is 8,500. Jack Shore is 7,700. Monk, plenty of stats for these guys. What do what does your statistical analysis you of the, you know, you, you should be in the fight nerd camp as well. What does it I say? should. I need those glasses with the tape on it. Um, yeah, it says play Joe Anderson Brito, uh, 130 points, 104, 108 against Pierce, who was only 86, but I don't, for some reason, have his salary here, but I don't think he was too expensive, and uh, Pierce was kind of <laughs> handling him until he decided to open his mouth and tell him to do something, and all of I guess Brito was like, oh, I can do something, and then immediately Ninja choked him uh, for the 86 points there. Jack Shore, I'm a huge fan. Um, four of his last five, he's won, taking the only L to Ricky Simone, in which he got subbed uh, after being undefeated for, I think, 16 fights, something like that. Turned That's around an against one, though. That's a really important one to look oh, at. Here. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Ricky, let's see, landed just two takedowns, controlled him for 50% of the eight and a half minutes that that fight was, uh, was taking place. I don't know, man. I'd be crazy to bet against uh, Joe Anderson Brito at this point. The guy comes out like a maniac and uh, is constantly getting finishes. And by constantly, I mean his last four in a row are all finishes. So, yeah, I'm going to be rostering the crap out of this fight. I like the Brito side a bit more. And at 8,500, that is just seems, seems uh, you know, sweet as candy. But Jack Shore, on the other hand, super tough. Trains with his dad. Also super tough guy. Super tough camp over there. Um, and don't believe when they say that they don't know what weight class it's on. This is at because it's coming. I love those tweets every time. Um, but yeah, play this fight. I'm siding with Brito, uh, although I'm not very confident. Not touching this in cash probably. Um, but for GPPs, I'm loving this fight. Yeah, this is a really good one to target. I'm also on the Brito side. Just the Simone. Getting to Jack Shore is important because Brito can do the same thing. Move forward, pressure, and he can wrestle too. Don't get it twisted. Brito can grapple. Um, I think he can do that. And I think Jack Shore is 
good, but I think he's reached a level in the UFC where this is a problem now. Like he was on the regional seed for a long time. God else went, did we supposed to do it's, you know, the long winning streak. And then he's not looked the same. He's got, you know, let, let's, let's take into Jack Shore here for just a hot second. Jack Shore scrolling down. And I like to pick on the cage warrior guys. You know, he beat Timor Valley who's not in the UFC Ludovic. Chalinian, Hunter Azure, Aaron Phillips, Nolan Hernandez. Wow, this UFC is that is one of the weakest five fight winning streaks in the UFC <laughs> I have ever seen. Whoa. It really is. And then Makwan Amir Khani. Yeah. Uh huh. Who's also not no longer in the UFC. So problems. I think Joe Anderson Brito is better than those guys, clearly. I think the pressure is going to be a severe problem. I do think it, when Jack Shaw wins his fights, he's going to wrestle you. He's going to get takedowns. He's going to lay on you. Do a little. He'll score decent. So it's one to target because if Brito wins, probably because he smashes Shore's face into the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, advice to Jack Shore: Don't grab a leg lock. You'll <laughs> yeah. end up unconscious. <laughs> don't so, grab a single and just hold it. Wasn't that Weston Wilson too? Didn't did, didn't we just reference Weston yeah. Wilson for the second yeah. time in this podcast? That's great. <laughs> Shout out Weston Wilson. Uh, so yeah, I'm on the Brito side. Fight book. Yeah, I'm on the Wilson side, the Brito side as well. Not on the Wilson. <laughs> yeah. side. I was gonna say, Jesus, you're on. The, I would never be on the Wilson side. But let's move on and talk about another one of the fighting nerds against another fighter from the UK, mm. Scotland, Wales. See what I did there. Interesting. Paul Bearju Craig taking on Kyle the Natural Bohio. You, those glasses and that neck tattoo fucking freak me out. Like, I don't know like, what to think, but if you look up oxymoron in the wild, fucking yeah. dictionary, it, it's it's a picture of ice on fire, and then right next to it is Kyle Bahio. <laughs> like, with, with, like, you is know, he handsome? Is he not? I don't know what to. I don't he, know what he, to think. He looks just like that in the picture in the dictionary, but he's also wearing a sweater vest. But he's also fucking your mom. He's like, also wearing jean shorts. Yeah, like, that's that's what's happening. Uh, for this fight, he is the big favorite, minus 450. Paul Craig is plus 340. Uh, DraftKings out. You got to go toward the top, obviously. Bahio, second most expensive fighter on the card at uh, 9,500. Paul Craig is 6,700. And I'm picking Kyle Bahio, but we got to get there still. Of those four, top four I mentioned, this is now my third favorite fight to target in the bunch. The other two are better. Um, Really, it's because Bahio, while he's looked decent in the UFC, it, he's plenty of decisions in his on his resume. Plenty. Like I can just go here. Uh, decision win over Godzi Omar Godziev. Decision over uh, Armin Petrosian. Decision over Mahmoud Muradov. Uh, did he get a finish over Mikhail Oleg who can't stop a submission against anybody though? Mm -hmm. And decision against Abus Magomedov. Good win, especially Abus. Paul Craig's fighting style. Also, is you know, with the way he goes to his back and it's awkward on the feet, I just feel like it's death to draft king scoring. I'll be interested to see what Monk says when he gets there. I know he's there's been big scores in his history before, but it's like round tree knocking him out early or the quick submissions he gets against, like, um, uh, whatchamacallit, who is uh, Jamal Hill, yeah, uh, so, so stuff like that. Just the way Bahio fights, I just there's plenty of room for a finish here, especially. Look, especially bah Bahio gets takes his fight to the ground. Paul Craig is dangerous as fuck off his back, and that's where he constantly wants to be. Paul Craig is sneaky live in this fight. He just everyone. So I, I, I and I know we talked a little bit earlier. So you're gonna you're you're and not an uncommon opinion. Ihor Poteria is like a live underdog is the cheapest one on the card. You can kind of mix him. He just you know the salary's wrong. He's live. I. Think those things about Paul Craig and not so much on Portaria. I'm like down on Ehor and up on Paul Craig. Like if that that punt hail mary play, Paul Craig is the one I'm looking at here. Just because, let's see what where you're at, Bahio. Like the, the quality of competition keeps going off, and, and people like to hate on Paul Craig, just like the hate on like the hate on another guy we're going to talk about later that I'm going to really make people crazy with. Um, same thing. Paul Craig has still been in the top five, top ten of these divisions for a long time. He's not a scrub. He's just not. If you make a mistake, he will take your arm home. He will triangle you. He will, like, Bahio should win this fight, and I'm going to play enough of him where he's not going to destroy me, but he's not the top option for cash games. 
and Craig is live. Yeah, this salary is kind of wild. Uh, yeah, that too. It's rough. 9,500. So if he's not getting a finish, which he only did, as Sniper just said, against Oleg Jacek, who gets finished when he loses, he's averaging 75 points per win. 68, 75, 80, and 77. Not good. Not good at all. Uh, meanwhile, Paul Craig, Paul Craig, excuse me, uh, I mean, did put up a decent score against Muniz, his first fight at, at middleweight. Um, but other than that, we're not really blowing any doors off. We're in the mid to high 90s in points given up per loss and points scored per win. So nothing special. Uh, Bahio, though, like I said, is in the uh, towards the bottom of uh, of the of the offensive scoring category. I think Craig has obviously the. Fifth shooting of takedown 50% and then rolling backwards onto your back is not a good game plan, but that's what he does against guys that obviously don't want to go to the ground and, and guys that would label themselves as strikers or that we would label as such. Uh, Bahio is not afraid to go to the ground. In fact, that's where he prefers to be, uh, obviously. And so therefore Craig's path to victory, which is a submission and Bahio making a mistake just got a little bit wider because Bahio is going to naturally give him more chances to do that. Uh, whether he will do that is another question, but Paul Craig definitely has more chances. I agree with you. I like him more than Pateria here for sure. Um, and I'm willing to take a, a nice GPP punt on the $6,700 fighter. Uh, I don't know about punting in cash. I probably won't need no, to. No, no. Just, go. Go, I, I, just play Carolina and Carrot Cake. Exactly. I won't need to go that low in cash, so I'm not even going to be thinking about any of these 6,000 guys. Um, but yeah, Bahio 9,500 GPPs is a bit too high for me uh personally even if it is against a guy um that can be finished i think this is more of a backpack situation if, if someone's going to dominate this fight this is going to be a backpack situation and we're going to see a decision and the winner is going to score 75 all right let's move on let's talk about the most expensive fighter on the card michelle demolidor i can't say it fuck that guy Pajeda. apparently he that means is- daredevil Ooh. like the comic well, Flipping off the fucking cage like a lunatic. It makes sense. He's minus 420. The comeback on Ihor Porteria is plus 320. Salaries that I alluded to. Pajera is 9,600. Most expensive fighter on the card. Porteria is 6,600. Um, look, Porteria uh, is taking this on short notice. Pajera, since he stopped doing all his crazy shit, continues to look more and more fucking dangerous and like a problem. He was kind of a meme. And all of a sudden, this dude is scary. You know, wins over Nico Price, Andre Fialho, Ponzinibbio was a fun fight. Andre Petrovsky dominated Mikhail Olegshechuk, you know, win, but six weeks ago. Porteria, look, the fight that he was supposed to have against, um, oh, God, who, who pulled out? Help me out. I can't remember. You're going to have to scroll uh, I'm down. Gonna have, I'm going to have to go back here. Oh, this is going to drive me crazy. I can't remember. Mm-hmm-hmm. I have to, I have to, now it's a, like a weird pause on the show and I'm all fucked up. And if I don't think of it, it's going to bother me. Let's scroll down. Mahmoud Muradov. God damn it. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. That would have been a much more interesting fight. Portalia fight kind of falls in the realm, the same realm of the guys that he's finishing. And Proteri is going to play into him. I mean, he looked a little more patient his last time out. That was the uh, Robert Breshik fight. Pereira <laughs> hits too hard. I think Ihor is going to get dragged into something silly. Just give me Michelle Pereira. He's the cash game guy. He's my favorite of the, all the payoffs. And he's super expensive. He's going to be a problem to fit in. But I'm going to find a way. Monk, how about for you? Yeah, I think he probably finishes here. Usually uh, Pereira is not scoring well, ever um not ever but especially since he's toned down his fighting style that said in his last two fights he's just just missed the quick win bonus put up 102 and 94 um you know you're how can you really score many more points than that in one minute uh if you're not getting the bonus there uh so i do like what we've seen like you said much more aggressive much more well much more aggressive while being more technical which is just what we wanted to see a fine mix of both uh pateria looked okay against brychek but brychek was a newbie and he completely freaking gassed uh, i believe in the second round there um yeah it's it's Pateta for me 
I'm uh, 9,600. I don't generally like to pay up, especially with a guy that is averaging like 80 some points per win, um, 86 to be exact. But Pateria has given up 111 when he loses. And I think Sniper's right. Just pay up for him in cash. That's where I'm going to be playing him is in cash. Um, and I'm just hoping, uh, hoping for the best. He's way more technically sound. Pateria is going to crumble. Yep. To- I agree with you there. Now let's get some fucking hate going. Yeah, let's do it. Vitor Petrino. He's the favorite. Minus 485. Taking on Anthony Lionheart Smith. Or if you prefer Bogdan Guskov 1.0. <laughs> Which, by the way, missed a ton of shit last week. Nailed that one. Yep. So that was good. That was a, a small victory there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is the line on this fight. Odds, Petrino, 9,400. Anthony Smith, 6,800. Everyone's talking about how much Vitor Petrino do you play? Monk, how much Vitor Petrino do you play? Not as much as they're going to play, Sniper. I tell you that much. Not as or just probably about as much as you're going to play from what we were talking about before the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a, I'm an Anthony Smith homer. He's from my hometown. Um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm always going to root for the guy. Uh, Vitor Petrino's looked decent uh, against the Pleasure Man. I'll always root for whoever's fighting the Pleasure Man. Uh, scored 116 there, 103, 93. So his, his points are going down. Then he decisions tyson pedro in a in one fight away from pedro's retirement fight scores 66 points in a in a nothing fight um so i don't know if he's not running through tyson pedro uh after pedro's basically done i don't know is he just gonna run through anthony smith i'm having a hard time basically figuring out how he how petrino's gonna pay off this 9400 dollars salary obviously he's gonna have to wrestle but Take even down. when he or even when he did land three takedowns, he landed three takedowns against Pedro, 36 so controlled him for a whole round and still scored 66 points. How does that math even work out? So yeah, give me Smith. I think he's the way better DraftKings option or in GPPs. Um and yeah, he should get beat here, but you know, he's he's up here talking, he's getting shit on because he's talking about he he wants to fight Alex Panetta, and that's fine, all that. But that's why I think people are shitting on him, just because of what he's saying. That has nothing to do with how he's fighting. Yeah, he's looked trash in his losses, but Vitor Petrino's not Khalil Roundtree. He's not Magomed Uncle Live. He's not even Johnny Walker. So, yeah, I'll take a chance on Smith here. So, I'm going to amend a little bit. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. This is a great fight to target. You made, you, I went all out on no, the plank. No, but and now, and now you're bit. backtracking. I'm, with no, me I'm going to back. I, I not backtrack. <laughs> I want more Smith than the average bear, but because this fight is such a great one to target at minus two sixty to end inside the distance. Yeah. If people play fifty five percent Petrino, I'll probably be around there. I'll probably be field weight to Petrino. He's not going to be a core play where I'm going 80 percent like. I'm going to try and, and it's also, I don't really know because I probably want 60 ish percent of Michelle Pereira. Any lineup with, like, yeah, you can't get to Pereira it, at that it, point. It gets real tough as you're building lineups. So, for exactly what you said, though, people like to shit on Anthony Smith, just like Paul Craig. He's been at the top of these divisions for a long time. He's yep. my light heavyweight champion. He's just, he, he didn't want to, the, the, the crown would have laid too heavy. Exactly. Um, <laughs> can just take, I, I get it. Just take oh. the win. Just put it like we would have forgiven you because it would have shut the, it, like it would have got rid of John Jones. Right. Like, like we would have forgiven you. This would not anyway. have been an Aljo situation. So, oh, please. Oh, fuck. It's a Long Island guy. You know how I feel about that. <laughs> and he smoked you on the second time. So, oh, like, I loved it. Love to see ass. it. Um, look, Anthony Smith, the takedown defense is a little questionable. That's where Petrino's going to should take advantage but you know we saw we've seen anthony smith who's tough as fucking nails if he can keep it on the feet he's gonna land plenty like if you drag petrino into one of these wars petrino's got a surprisingly good gas tank but it's because all the fights have kind of been on his terms the second a fight isn't on his terms what is that big muscly gas tank gonna look like this could be the fight where he finally starts to slow down i'm gonna pick vitor petrino and it's a great fight to target like i said i would just recommend if there's any takeaway from this fight for me that I think is different than the crowd. Bump up your Anthony Lionheart Smith exposure just a little bit. I think he's getting shit on just a little bit too hard. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to the co-main event of the evening. Jonathan Martinez. He's the favorite. He's minus 135 against 
Jose the kid, Jose the king of Rio. Fuck Junior. Jose the king of Rio Aldo, who's plus one ten. Uh, line the DraftKings salary on this fight eighty three hundred for Martinez. Aldo is seventy nine hundred. This is probably the fight I'm most interested in. Quite honestly, even even more than the title fight, I want to see this fight. Jonathan Martinez is a fantastic leg kicker. Seen got the he's got the the leg kick knockouts. Jose Aldo, back in the day, did that to people. That's what Jose Aldo did. So is Jose Aldo going to have an answer to those? He's thrown them less and less throughout his career. Also, you've got Jose Aldo. Who basically, honestly, let's be honest, he's a boxer at this point in his career. He's back in retirement. This is, I believe, the last fight. In this. He's finishing up his UFC contract. Great. No knock on him. Is he really invested? Definitely a step slower probably at this point, but he's still really good. I should be an all-striking affair. Super excited about it. You know what, what I really like about it more is that for DraftKings, I don't have to think about it too much because we got a fight that is all-striking. Probably isn't going to see a finish. Probably not going to have anybody on the optimal. I'm going to be probably a little bit Probably a field weight to um, it's minus two sixty to go to decision. I'll be field weight or under on both guys and just sit back and enjoy and hope something crazy happens. I'll have a few few shares, but it's it's one I can just enjoy. But for you, monk. Yeah, I completely agree here for DraftKings GPPs cash. I'm not looking forward to this one at all. Um, I'll be uh, you know wanting to see Aldo win. I think Martinez is probably going to win a decision. But I think you, uh, I think you nailed it here. I mean, I don't expect any kind of anything but just you know a striking battle for for 15 minutes and a relatively low-ish volume striking battle, three to four strikes a minute from each each side. Um, so yeah, those fights. I'm expecting the winner to win by decision, score 75 to 80 points, and like you said, I am going to enjoy this one. Uh, likely won't see Aldo back in the UFC cage, I would imagine. Um, so we're also not. Also, not backing uh, retirement fighters is one of my one of my rules here, so I don't even have to worry about uh, worry about uh, you know the comebacks from that. So yeah, Martinez is the pick, just barely rooting for Aldo, uh, fading um, in all tournaments. It's main event time, boys and girls. Hit the like button. The and like. Let's talk. Alexandre Pantoja taking on Steve Astro Boy Ersig, who has got. How many UFC fights again? Oh, yeah, three. That's right. I haven't heard that anywhere. Three UFC fights <laughs> fighting for a title. Let's do the odds. Odds. Pantoja's minus 250. Astro Boy's plus 200. DraftKings, we're looking at Pantoja, 8,800. Come back on Earth 6, 7,400. You've also heard this a bunch, but it's worth noting because I just, you know, you see the Pantoja, his buildups. I want to give somebody a Rocky-like shot. And I know people have said this, but it's just stuck in my head. Did, did you watch Rocky? Like, you know what happened, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, Spoiler what? alert. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's not the comparison I'd be making as the champion. That's what you say <laughs> if you're Steve Ersig. But okay, sure. Ersig is getting a lot of love that, I, that I've seen. and He's live. And don't get me wrong. He is live because Pantoja Barrels Ford is willing to be hit and get into a war. Sure. Pantoja is still better. And I think that's being a little bit lost. Is Pantoja is the better grappler, the better striker. It's just his ability to get into a war and they get, you know, the, 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 I almost, I almost, <laughs> I almost said eight ounce gloves. That's not right. <laughs> um, you know, soon to be three ounce gloves. Well, are they really going between, from, from four they to changed. Three? It's going between, it's going to be like between two something and three something. Oh, like, nice. Depending nice. on the, depending on the weight class. I, at that point, just give him one ounce gloves. Whatever. <laughs> well, it depends. It's the amount of padding in it that changes the. Yeah, but based on weight class, uh, so are they well, giving it's the bigger basically guys? hand hand size? Basically, oh, hand size. Weight okay. class. But All right. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Uh, so you want to have you want to be heavy with really dainty hands, so there's no padding. You didn't watch the forty minute glove breakdown like I did. No, no, I did no. not. I mean, let me pop some headphones. Now you room. don't have to. Next time my wife's talking to me about something I, I don't want to hear. Just <laughs> uh, look. So Pantoja's just better. You could stack it up in cash. Sure. I'm not sure I'm going to go there because everyone's going to play Ersig. Like, I'm not. This is the part That's of cash true. I'm undecided with is do I just stack it up as a blocker 
or do I go double? And I'm gonna see what my other options are, or do I do the double super punt, the lady punt, and get more favorites? I like undecided. I think those are the two cash game strategies. R6 mm-hmm. getting too much love for me in GPPs. I'll probably back off a little bit because I think it's going to be silly ownership, like 35%, which just that don't feel right to me. So I'll be a little under that. Pantoja's, I think, five rounds is active. A guy I'll have to be overweight on. So that's my – and I, so clearly for me the pick is Pantoja. Monk, how about for you? Yeah, I tend to agree. I think Pantoja, like you said, uh, is just going to remind people, you know, there there's a big size yeah. difference here. Four inches in height, uh, a couple inches in reach, and a few years in age. But yeah, I mean, Pantoja's looked fantastic. Aside from making uh, a couple of mistakes in the grappling via Royval and um, um, Moreno, I think, which he talked about. Um, and I think it was the Royval fight in which he said he was, it was must have been one of the times Royval was on his back. He said he was extremely exhausted and uh, was close to being the end of the fight. But either way, he battled back from whatever adversity he was, he was going through. And he's put up 143 points in each of his past two five-round decisions, guys. So, yeah, I'm leaning Pantoja. Hopefully, decision. Um, this is probably the five-round flyweight fight that I was hoping to get last week. Um, luckily for me, I did not end up stacking the main in my uh, main cash lineup, but I ended up going with just Perez. Um, but this time, I mean, the stack is, I suppose, a cash option. Cause I don't know what Steve Ersig is going to look like if, if Pandoja makes a couple mistakes, maybe he can score a ton of points in this five round decision, but yeah, I'm not going to overthink this one. I'm leaning Pantoja. I love him for cash, uh, probably for GPPs too. And 8,800 is not too expensive for me to pay out. So yeah, give me Pantoja decision. Hopefully we see a score somewhat close to uh, the two he's put up uh, 140 a piece basically in his last two. That's it, guys. That's all 14 fights, but we got to do kill shots. If you don't know what a kill shot is, unowned, underowned fighter, so not the main event, usually the underdog, somebody unexpected to put in your lineups who can help you win a GPP. Trying to avoid the chalk, find a big winner. Monkey got one uh, locked and loaded for us. I do, but I'm, I'm not going to take yours. Everyone knows who I want to say, but I'm not going to take it because I'm going to let you have it. No, um, no, no. You, you, you can do it because I didn't, I didn't pick him straight up. Okay. Well, her. Her oh, straight her. up. Yeah, no. yeah. All right. That, that, was, that was the other one. I, I got another one locked and loaded. I actually got one I like, I, I like a little better. Well, I think I like that one too if I know who you're talking about, but I'm going with my girl, Carolina Kovalkiewicz here at 7K. I mean, way underpriced against a person who uh, is way inexperienced. Um, it could go wrong for me, but hey, what what do you expect with a 7K fighter? I'm taking my chances. I'm backing my girl here. Let's go Carolina five in a row. So being in Brazil, I have to be able to chant one more time, ooh, vai, madeira, ooh, vai, madeira. Elvis Brenner's going to finish it. the process. Yes. I like Elvis yeah. Brenner to get a bounce back here at 7,200. Underdog price I don't quite get, and just th- there could be some points in this one. So that is my kill shot for UFC 301. Guys, Domination Station Optimizer. More notes from me, Monk, two other coaches, full breakdowns, Discord that is hilarious and sometimes a little disturbing. You guys could go check that out. Shout out to everybody in Discord who is watching that, who makes things fun. Tons of other DFS sports going, prize picks, all the good stuff. Make sure you check it out at those links down below. Monk, you got anything else before we get the fuck out of here? Uh, No, not much. Looking forward to this card. Uh, Do got a new show. Check it out. Bankroller Bust. It's the world's first MMA betting game show. Sniper, I'll be reaching out to you. So check your DMs in a couple of weeks. Reaching out to you to come on, but be sure to check that I, I have, out. I have a game show addiction. In all series, I have a game show addiction. <laughs> Aside from currently watching all the reality shows on TV, it's my guilty pleasure. Like I watch, I've been watching Survivor since season one, so you can't. Oh, nice. Watch. Although I'm pretty much out on it now. The casting's bad, but I watch Big Brother and The Challenge are all like my go to staples. And when I was a kid, I would watch The Price is Right and Pressure oh, yeah. Luck and. Chuck Willery, I'll be back in two and two. So you, you, game show around MMA and betting. Put, oh, yeah. Just just, just tell me when and I'll be there. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to that. We might have to get you on for the next big, the next pay-per-view, maybe 302. Uh, but yeah, other than that, not doing much. Just looking forward to this card. Guys, hit the like on the video and check out 
dfsarmy.com baby win some money let's go what are you doing hey, if you're not in there you are missing out did 14 fights in under an hour monk good luck this weekend i will see you for the next card guys my usual sign up that I do for the prize packs, prize picks videos. I'm going to do it here. Whether or not you are a DFS Army member, you fucking probably should be. But either way, I appreciate you. Good luck. Cash those tickets or lineups, and I'll see you next time.